In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to install the Atlassian SourceTree graphical client using Microsoft Windows 7. Now, for users of Windows, you may find that SourceTree and other graphical clients provide a little easier experience using Git than you may have on the command line. We'll install SourceTree on Windows, and we'll also talk a little bit about how to use Git on Windows and some of the challenges you might encounter. So let's start off by downloading the SourceTree application for Windows. We'll do this by going to sourcetreeapp.com. Atlassian is nice enough to give you a nice big blue button for downloading SourceTree. So if we click on the Download SourceTree button, this should start our download automatically. Now Windows will open up the little dialog about wanting to run or save it. We'll run this application the setup wizard pops open, and setting up source tree is going to be very similar to installing other Windows programs. In this case, we'll click the Next button to start the installation process. Like most other Windows programs, it'll ask us where we'd like to install it. We'll just accept the default and begin the installation of source tree. And once the installation is complete, I'll click Finish here, and it will automatically launch source tree. we see an empty repository. Not many messages here or anything that's terribly useful. The next step we'll want to do is set up SourceTree to use our remote repositories. So in this case, let's go to File and start the Setup Wizard. Now the Setup Wizard is going to open and it's going to display a few things that may already be present on our system if we've used Git before. Some of these are due to global configuration variables or you may be entering in some things here for the first time. A lot of these may be your full name or potentially a username and an email address. There's a few things we're going to allow SourceTree to do. We're going to allow it to modify our global files, do some configurations, and we're also going to agree to a few terms of the SourceTree license. If we click Next, we'll also get some instructions and options we have for using an SSH client. This is one of the tricks in using Git with Windows, as Git was originally designed mainly as a Unix program. It was meant to manipulate and work on the Linux kernel initially. But Git relies heavily on some Unix libraries, specifically using SSH public and private key infrastructures to encrypt traffic. Now, one of the immediate things that SourceTree will ask you to do is choose between a tool called PuTTY or a tool called OpenSSH. Now most of the time, and it's pretty straightforward here, SourceTree is going to recommend that if you are going to use SSH configurations, use the PuTTY plink configuration as it's more Windows friendly and it's really aimed at using Windows. We will cover using PuTTY later on in some of our sessions, but for now, we can click Next and we'll configure our remote repositories with SourceTree. In this case, I want to connect my GitHub account with SourceTree as a remote repository. So I'll enter in my username and password for GitHub. And this will be the username and password you use to sign up for an account on github.com. And we'll finish. And once the configurations have been tested, we can verify that we're able to read some of our remote repositories with SourceTree by clicking the clone slash new button in the upper left hand corner of the source tree interface, which will open a dialog that will ask me for a source tree path or URL to clone a Git repository. But I can verify remote connections by clicking on the little globe icon that'll pop open a little box here that says browse hosted projects. This will look at remote repositories we've set up to see if we'd like to pick one and clone it to our local workstation. So if I click this button, we'll see something loading here. And once the loading dialog is finished, there is a project hosted on GitHub, owned by the Infinite Skills owner, that's called Git Example, which is the project we'll be using to demonstrate features of Git in later videos. Now that we've completed that, we have Source Tree for Windows installed and ready to use to check out source code repositories and to make changes and manipulate Git repositories.
I'd also like to take a moment and make a note for future use on using Git with Windows. As I've mentioned earlier, Git was originally designed around some of the concepts and infrastructure of the Unix operating system. As such, some of the command line features and options in using Git for Windows is a little bit different when using the command line. If you've installed Atlassian Source Tree and you still would like to use the command line, a very easy feature that comes with Source Tree is something called the terminal within Source Tree. Now, the terminal within Source Tree is a tool that essentially creates a small Unix shell with some very limited commands within that shell, essentially allowing you to use the Git tool and manipulate repositories using the exact same commands and syntax of the Unix operating system. We get to that by opening Source Tree. And once Source Tree is opened, there is a tool here that says Open in Terminal. And if we click on that Open in Terminal option, a new command line window opens, which will give us commands that we can use to manipulate Git repositories. So in this case, it opens a file into the Atlassian source tree directory, which we can change to wherever our source code repository is. Later on, we'll also see some features of using Git after cloning in Windows and how to manipulate using the terminal in that fashion. But we can manipulate files and directories within the terminal, for example, by typing ls, It'll give us a directory listing of everything that's in the program files Atlassian source tree directory. So after we've installed source tree, we also have a very handy client and the ability to use the git command line client that can sometimes be difficult to install and set up on Windows.